All right. <clears throat> Hello, anatomy students. All right, today we'll be looking at the um, mid-sagittal cut head model or the half head model and looking at all the structures as it pertains to the nervous system. So here we have the anterior side, you have the nose, nasal cavity, mouth, um, posterior side, occipital bone, cerebellum. Um, so let's start from the superior side of this model. So right here we have a superior sagittal sinus carrying venous blood eventually to a jugular foramen where an internal jugular vein is waiting to bring the blood to the heart. Um, so the superior sagittal sinus is outlined by this uh, connective tissue layer right here, two of them that make up the dura mater, uh, one being the periosteal layer of the dura mater right here. The dura mater is always two layers, whether or not they're separated and filled with some venous blood, um, you know, that can happen. Then you'll have a sinus. The other layer being the meningeal layer of the dura mater. You don't need to know these layers, but just know that the dura mater is two dense connective tissue layers. Um, and then all this blue is the venous blood. And the venous blood is coming in from these little spots right here, these little red spots. These are the arachnoid villi. Uh, now what this is, is an extension of the uh, arachnoid mater coming into the um, into this dura mater, into that sinus. Um, so cerebral spinal fluid from the subarachnoid space will come in here and be and turn into blood. So this is where the cerebral spinal fluid leaves um, the subarachnoid space and it turns back into blood. Remember, it was originally it originally came from blood from these choroid plexuses and all the ventricles. So that blood will then flow down and converge at the confluence of sinuses. Blood also here from the straight sinus will co uh, converge here. The two transverse sinuses on either side are going to converge here as well and lead down. Um, sorry, it's going to they're, they're going to actually leave out towards the transverse sinus, then to a sigmoid sinus, and then to that internal jugular vein waiting at the jugular foramina. Um, all right, so then here we have the cerebrum, very developed in a human, it's very large. Um, and then you'll have the corpus callosum right here, all of this is what we're gonna call the corpus callosum. There are parts to it, but this is all corpus callosum, and it's the connection or the bridge between the two hemispheres of the brain. Um, and then below that, you have the septum pellucidum, this like letter or number eight here. And then below that, you'll have the fornix, which is part of the hippocampus. Um, it's where actually its axons are, are leaving. Um, but fornix right here. And now um, we're going to go down to the um, diencephalon area. So below the fornix, now we're heading, we're into the diencephalon area. Um, and by the way, for the before we get there, the, the, in either side of the septum pellucidum, there will be lateral ventricles. Um, so one lateral ventricle on this side, one lateral ventricle on the other side, filled with cerebral spinal fluid. Okay. And then there'll be an interventricular foramen. Um, that will lead the spinal, sp cerebral spinal fluid be able to connect with the third ventricle here that kind of fills this space right here. You can see some of the cord plexus of the third ventricle that goes around this little yellow spot, yellow orange spot called the intermediate mass connecting the two thalami in either side. So it'll be the third ventricle filling with cerebral, cerebral spinal fluid right here. So yeah, this is the intermediate mass. It's the bridge between the two thalami. Here's one thalami on the right side all around the actual uh, tissue, all around this number five, the intermediate mass, is one of the thalamus, thalami. And then there'd be another one out here. Okay, above the thalamus, you have this little pink line right here leading to the pineal gland. This is called the epithalamus. A part of the epithalamus is, is actually the pineal gland. All right, so then kind of traverse the third ventricle here go down and this is the hypothalamus number 18 here all of this area um, one of the and then if you go down this way you go through the infundibulum and you'll eventually reach which is the canal leading to the pineal uh, sorry pituitary gland number 11 here 
All right, so we're back in the third ventricle over here. And then if we were to go down the cerebral aqueduct, if we were cerebral spinal fluid, then we would eventually hit this fourth ventricle with the lateral apertures going that way towards the right and left here laterally, and then the median aperture going down and in medially of the fourth ventricle. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Here we have the midbrain. I'm highlighting the midbrain, okay? Just below uh, this uh, inferior end of the third ventricle, and then you have the midbrain. Uh, that, that would consist of the red nuclei, the, um, sorry, uh, so the Sistina Niagara. Let me just check my pronunciation on that one. Uh, Substantia Niagara. Uh, but we're here we're looking actually at the cerebral uh, peduncle. All right, and then on this side we have the corpora quadrigemina. Um, there would be two superior colliculi, oh sorry, colliculi and two inferior colliculi. Um, okay, and then going down from the midbrain, then you have the pons here, and then we'll have some cerebellar peduncles coming here towards the cerebellum, and those, those that white matter will be will connect right here, and then eventually form all these branch-like structures called the arbor vitae. And all the brown little folds going around the arbor vitae are called the folia of the cerebellum. Then we're seeing the vermis that goes in between both sides of the cerebellum. So the vermis of the cerebellum, you're kind of seeing that sneak down here, it kind of pokes out immediately uh, between the two parts of the two halves of the cerebellum. Um, all right, and then here we have the medulla oblongata, and then the spinal cord, and then here's more sub uh, arachnoid space with cerebral spinal flu fluid in it. Uh, all right, so that's. Oh, one, I, one thing I missed, let's go back up. Some of you are probably wondering, why am I not talking about this little bumper here in the diencephalon? Yeah, this is a mammillary body. So other than that, um, I've covered everything on this model and you should be good to go. All right, I'll see you in the next video.